God is good. He's faithful. And he wants to do something. Always. He wants to do something in every one of our life at all the time. You know what I'm saying? You know, so many people think that, oh man, I got to give something up. I got to give this up. I got to give that up. See, if you're really walking with God, you don't, you're not concerned about giving anything up because you give it up. There's no struggle. If you're really walking in the Spirit of God, nothing matters but Him. Nothing. Your main desire is to fulfill the will of God in your life. That's what your desire is. We sing that song... And he says, who will go? A lot of people say, I will, I will. But when the time comes time for him to say, okay, go, they go, well, wait a minute. I still got this to do. I still got that to do. Um, I, I, you know, I got, well, I, well, this isn't finished yet. Well, that, I, you know, and people make excuses. It's because they're not in that place yet. And one thing the Lord wants to get us is in that place. And what we need is godly counsel. Hello? Amen. We need godly counsel. We need godly counsel through His Spirit, through His Word, through whom God puts in, in our path as for overseers and the offices of the body of Christ. We need godly counsel. Does everybody understand that? Amen. And I want to talk a little bit about godly counsel. First of all, Godly counsel, I want to just share the definition of the Spirit, <clears throat> is the abandonment of worldly or ungodly counsel. <laughs> That's what godly counsel is. It's the abandonment of ungodly or worldly counsel. So what you're actually doing is you're accepting godly counsel compared to what the world has to say, compared to uh, uh, what people have to say, but what God says. Would you turn to John 14? Oh, hallelujah. John 14. Verse 15, 16 and 17, will you read it with me? If you love me, keep my commands, and I will what? Pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and will be in you. And we know that he is talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we see here the Holy Spirit, a representation of the word helper means counselor. He is our counselor, isn't he? Go to verse um, 26. Read it with me. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will what? Teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Wow. So he will teach us all things. Everything that has to is pertaining to the will of God. Everything that pertains to the will of God, he'll teach you. That's why some people are still trying to get certain other things and they don't get it. Because it's not the will of God. There are people in schools right now trying to get through, but it's not the will of God. But if it's the will of God, the Holy Spirit will give you understanding. He'll counsel you. He'll teach you. And he'll guide you to all truth. Because that's who he is. He is the spirit of counsel. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Go to 
Isaiah 9. Isaiah chapter 9. And verse 6 and 7. <clears throat> Can everybody hear me back there? Okay. Would you read it with me? For unto us a child is born... Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Well, that sounds like God Almighty, isn't it? It is. And he is everything, isn't he? He is the Counselor. He is wisdom. He is everything. And it says that he would come into the world. So we know that when he left, he left us his spirit. So he's doing the same thing, isn't he? Let's go on to verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end. Upon the throne of David, over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From the time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And he did, didn't he? He, God Almighty, put on flesh, came into the world, that he could leave us his spirit. So that we could have constant counsel who will guide us to all truth, tell us things to come, and give us understanding. Grant us wisdom. And all the things pertaining to the will of God pertaining to the will of God. Amen. Isaiah 11. Hallelujah. In verse 2 through 5. Will you read it with me? The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Now we know that that is the sevenfold of the Holy Spirit. We see that all of this together is a representation of the fullness and the character of the Holy Spirit. And we see that he is counselor again, isn't he? It's called counselor. Right. It says his delight is in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by the sight of his eyes nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his waist. Praise God. So we see he's known as the spirit of counsel. Amen? Now, counsel is also a representation of a few other words. One of the words I want to say is convict. And we talked about this Friday, about how the Spirit's first priority was to come and convict. Well, you know what? Counsel is a representation of conviction too, isn't it? In other words, that's how he gets our attention. Sometimes conviction is a knock on the shoulder. Yo, listen to me. Has everybody got it? Why? Conviction causes us to listen so that we can get counsel. Not only does it cause us to repent. So we see that counsel is a representation of convict or judges. Judgment is a representation of counsel. Chastisement is a representation of counsel of the Lord. Rebuke is a representation of counsel of the Lord. and corrects <clears throat> because it is his counsel with righteousness. <clears throat> he always counsels with his righteousness. In other words, everything that's pertaining to the will of God according to his righteousness, 
he counsels me and you with. <coughs> Hallelujah. So let me repeat that. Counsel is a representat representation of convict, judgment, chastisement, rebuke, correction. Everybody got it? Hallelujah. Turn to Revelation 3. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 3. This is one of the letters written to one of the churches, Laodiceans. In verse 15, he says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are what? Lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now let me share something with you. A lot of people determine cold or hot and how a person reacts. That's not how it is. A representation of cold or hot is how much that person's in love with Jesus. There's a lot of people who have an outward zealous, but not an inward. The hotness is where your heart is towards Him. How much you're in love with Him. Amen? He says, because you say I am what? I am rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Now let me explain to you what a couple of these things mean. <clears throat> the word wretched here represents is a representation of someone who uses or manipulates. I am wretched. I'm a user and I'm a manipulator. The word miserable is a representation of an individual that is selfish. Because you know why? They're always miserable because they can't get what they want. <clears throat> and poor is a representation of lacks godly wisdom. Blind is a representation of one that's deceived. And naked is a representation of one that is not clothed with a pure heart. Not clothed with a pure heart. Let me repeat these again. Wretched is a representation of a user or manipulator. Miserable is selfish or selfishness because there are, they can't get what they want. Poor is a representation of lack of godly wisdom. Blind is a representation of deceived. Naked is a representation of not clothed with a pure heart. <clears throat> Let's go to verse um, 18. Read it with me. He says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. So we see that there's a price to pay, isn't there? He says, buy this from me. What is the representation? Humble yourself and receive the pure wisdom that is from God and not from the world. You're actually buying wisdom or you're buying counsel from God. And you're paying the price by bringing yourself humble before Him and acknowledging Him that only He can do it and not you. Amen? All to God be the glory. Proverbs 8. <clears throat> Pro 
Proverbs chapter 8. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 12. <clears throat> Would you read it with me? 12 through 21. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. Say it again. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. you got to understand this. He's talking about God's spirit, isn't he? Amen. So what is he sharing? He's saying, listen, without my spirit and my counsel, you are not Strengthen your weakened. You will not have understanding and you will not gain wisdom. And the strength that we'll try to do will be of our own and not of His. That means you and I will always try and build a house and it won't stand. But what the Lord builds, builds, stands. And of course then we must maintain it. Amen? So the one thing we want to do is get godly counsel. We want to get the counsel of the Spirit of the Lord. Always. And you and I should be asking that every single day to the Lord. Lord, grant me your counsel today. Give me your counsel. You know, it's just like people who, um, you know, I, I, I've been in a lot of places where they invite the Holy Spirit and then don't do anything with them. Well, a lot of people invite the spirit of counsel and still don't listen to them. And they think they're listening to the spirit of counsel when they're not. And we'll go in a little bit more into that. <clears throat> so the Lord says, counsel is mine and sound wisdom, understanding and strength. They all go together, don't they? Amen. Proverbs 20. It's quiet in here tonight. Is everybody all right? Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 20. <coughs> Hallelujah. Would you read verse 18? Read it with me. Plans are established by counsel, by wise counsel, wage war. Now understand, in other words, the representation that plans are established by counsel. They're established so that wars can be won. Has anybody got it? So that battles can be won. You can't go into battle without having some counsel. You've got to have a plan, don't you? Go to verse 5 now. It says what? Help. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. So someone with understanding will know how to draw out the counsel of the Lord. He'll know how to pull out the wisdom that God has given him. He'll know how to get deep into the things of the Spirit. And accept godly counsel. Go to 1 Corinthians 2. First Corinthians chapter two. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Everybody there? Amen. In verse nine through eleven. 
But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now that sounds like a plan, right? But God has revealed them through his what? His spirit, known as the spirit of what? Counsel. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. He's talking about that deep well, isn't he? That deep place where the counsels are given. Deep waters. People like to bounce off of them but never get in. Hmm. <laughs> Go to verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Wow. Only the spirit of God. Not the spirit of a man. The spirit of God. There's a lot of spirit of man, a lot of counsel of the spirit of man. But when it's the spirit of God, there's a change. Amen. Spirit brings, brings counsel from the deep. <laughs> oh, glory. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Would you read verse 22 with me? Without counsel, plans go array. All right. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. You know, so many times when the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us and giving us counsel, we want to run what's just been given to us instead of waiting for confirmation. Because sometimes one of the most important things in counsel is timing. Without, if you're not, if, if you're not in the right timing with the counsel that's been given, it will fall. It will crumble. It won't stand. There's a lot of people who come out of their prayer, prayer closets, oh man, I got some counsel from the Lord today, see ya. But God didn't say go. He didn't say do. So we must be in the spirit, deep in the spirit, to realize that when the counsel of the Lord comes, we must discern when. Because if you don't discern when, the counsel or the plan will not work. And we'll go around that mountain. Or get put back in the back of the waiting room, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go all the way back to the back seat again. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> you know what? Praise God. I, I, I want to go to uh, Proverbs 16. In verse 9, it says what? A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord what? Directs his steps. <laughs> Praise God. That's through his counsel, isn't it? But you got to understand, God does not force us to do anything, does he? He counsels us and let, allows us to have a free will. So if we'll accept his counsel, there will always be a fruitful end. Amen? Amen. So without counsel, man's pl uh, plans go kaput. But it says in a multitude, it is established. That's why it's so important that when we get counsel, 
we wait on confirmation. Especially if it's from, if you get it in your prayer closet. Amen? If you get something from the Lord through the Spirit, He always gives you confirmation. Amen. If there's no confirmation, you wait. That means it's not God's time. But He's preparing you. Sometimes He gives us the counsel so that we can start looking. No. He says, because it says be watchful in your prayer, right? So we start looking. And sometimes there'll be something that is similar. Because there's a lot of counterfeit out there. That's why the Lord doesn't want us to grab the wrong thing. He wants us to grab the right thing. And then something's going to happen. It's going to be established by Him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 11. Verse 14. Read it with me, please. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. Wow. Where there's no counsel, the people fall. But in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. So in other words, more than one counsel. Amen. You know, so many times people want to drive through counsel. <laughs> Okay, just put a little water on the sponge and there's the council. There is no drive through council. And I'm not saying God can't heal somebody out of his sovereignty and his mercies and his grace. Believe me, I counsel with a lot of people. I've seen people get healed and delivered right in my office. But it doesn't mean that the count then they go they run and they think everything's okay. But they haven't gotten counsel yet, they just got freed. There's a difference. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? So, because counsel is a continuous thing, we need to maintain counsel with the Lord on the constant. That's what we're to do every day, aren't we? Lord, grant me your counsel, your correction, and your direction today. Right? And we want counsel of the Lord. <clears throat> Go to uh, Deuteronomy 17. Deuteronomy. Do, do, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 17. Did I say that? Yeah. And in verse 6, would you read it with me? Whoever is deserving of death shall be put to death on the testimony of two or three witnesses. He shall not be put to death on the testimony of one witness. Wow. So we know that and the Word also tells us that out of the mouth of two witnesses, it is what? Yeah. Established. So we see that this started all the way back in the Old Testament as for in the book of in, in Deuteronomy. But out of the two witnesses, two or three more witnesses. So that means God wants to give us more than one thing, one confirmation. So in the multitude of counsel, it's the same thing. So if out of the mouth of two witnesses in this, in this category, it was considered judgment and death, then out of the mouth of two witnesses and counsel of the Lord, there should be blessing. Has everybody got it? There is total confirmation on that then, isn't there? Amen. How many times have you had a dream or he had a witness in your spirit because it was counsel of the Lord and then you got confirmation? Yeah. Or you're waiting for confirmation. And when you get confirmation, you know that's counsel of the Lord. You're going, okay, bam, it's the time to go. Is now the time? When's the time? And as we wait on God, He'll make the way. Amen. But the one thing is, is He just doesn't send you out blind. 
In fact, you, you read about, uh, even in the New Testament, how many times Paul was sent out and no, knew what was going to happen. In fact, there was times when they told him, don't go out there, man. You're going to get thrown in jail. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. He knew it. But the Lord said, go. So he was taking counsel of the Lord, not counsel of man. And there's a difference. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Isaiah 30. Godly counsel. Isaiah 30 and verse 1. Isaiah 31 through 3. Let's read it together. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel, but not, not of who? Not of me. He calls them rebellious. So they're taking counsel from somewhere else, aren't they? Taking counsel from their own heart, the voice of the stranger, from their own desires, wherever it is. But they're not taking counsel of the Lord. And who despise plans, Devise plans, excuse me. Who devise plans, but not of my spirit. Man, I got a plan. I got a plan. Come on. Man, we can make a lot of money. Yoo I got a plan how to build this. I got a plan how to build that. You'll know if it's of God or not. You'll have confirmation. Amen. No confirmation, it ain't daddy. Always confirms. Everything is confirmed by the Lord. He never sends us out blind. Amen. He sends us out prepared. Amen. That's why the word says, don't be unevenly yoked and so forth, right? Depart from evil and whatever. These are counsels from the Lord, isn't it? Through his word. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Verse 2. All right. Let's finish this. That they may what? Add, Add sin to sin. So we see here that it says, Woe to the rebellious children who say the Lord, who take counsel but not of me, who devise plans but not of my spirit, they may add sin to sin. So they add more sin. First of all, the first sin is rebellion. Now they're continuing to sin in their Sin is building up, isn't it? Who walk to go down to Egypt, which means what? Worldly. And have not asked my advice. How many times have you done something and not asked God's advice? <laughs> to strengthen themselves. Who? Themselves. In the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame, and trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation. So we see that man can devise his own plan, but we must have godly counsel. Amen. We must have godly counsel. In other words, this is a representation of. Assuming. When man begins to assume, he starts devising his own plan. <clears throat> well, I, uh, I, I feel that this is right. Well, you're told it's right. But you have confirmation that it's right. Now you've got to understand something. The devil likes to give you a desire that you think is of the Lord, and the devil likes to give you confirmation, too, so that you think it's of God. Because what he's trying to do is push you out of God's timing. Anywhere there is a push, you know that it's of the devil. 
it's always flowing and peaceful. When God gives us counsel, either through His Spirit, through His Word, or whatever, you'll get confirmation, and it will be a flow. It will never be a push. Never. It always just happens. In fact, sometimes you'll go, man, I don't even know all this. Man, all of a sudden, it just, it just, or God just brings it to you. Sometimes the Lord is preparing you to receive something so that you know it's of Him. But you must be in the Spirit to discern whether it is of God or of the devil. Because he's the greatest counterfeit, isn't he? Hallelujah. So, when we don't know what to do, what do we do? Nothing. Oh, praise God. Even when we got counsel of the Lord and it's not time, we haven't gotten confirmation yet, what do you do? Nothing. Wow. And what if you got counsel from the Lord and you feel a push? Remember what you said tonight. <laughs> Go to Proverbs 12. Go to Proverbs 12. That's right. You're all, it's all on tape tonight. Do you remember? <laughs> now the Holy Spirit will remind you if you're listening. If you're listening. Proverbs 12. Verse 15. <laughs> Is everybody there? Oh, we're going to read this one together, okay? Proverbs 12, verse 15. <laughs> Come on, everybody, read it. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But he who what? Heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame. He who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness deceit. Wow. So we see here that uh, sometimes in our own eyes, we can become fools. We've all done it. Come on, every one of us has felt like a fool at least once a week. <laughs> oh man, why did I? I should have. You know what? I heard the Lord tell me that on my way out, and I should have done that. You know, I, I, man, I was, here I am going, Lord, grant me your counsel. I need your direction today. And then He tells us, and we go, but well, after it's all done and whatever, we're out there. Oh man. And I'll never forget when the Lord told me one morning, He said, I want you to bring. $20 with you. And I was going to a morning prayer. And I went outside and I took off. No, I didn't. I held off. I came back in and I went, ah! I grabbed the $20 and I went. I didn't think anything of it. Somehow, one way or another, it was after prayer, now, my wife used to give me an allowance of $20 a week, you know. And <laughs> yeah. Praise God. <laughs> so anyways, i make a long story short. I was able to uh, bless somebody, you know. And then there was a time when I left, and the Lord asked me to pick up something, and I didn't. And in that morning, that prayer, somebody asked for something, and I didn't have it with me. And I was like, man, here I am asking for your counsel and your direction. You give it to me and prepare me for something, and I miss it. You know. So, and the thing was, is I walked right by it. So my confirmation was it was right there. And this other voice said, oh, you don't need that now. But I did. I did. So if I would have taken heed of the counsel and gotten my, and acknowledged my confirmation right there, somebody else would have got blessed. And you've got to remember something. God has always given us counsel for direction 
but not only for our blessing, but for someone else to be blessed too. And expanding his kingdom and bringing glory to his name. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. Let's go to... Um, so when you don't know what to do, what do you do? Nothing. Or you ask. Hello. You ask. Don't assume. There's a lot of assumption. Assumption gets you in trouble. You can't go by what you feel. Well, I feel this is good. Yeah. This is of God. I got joy in my heart. How many people got married because there was joy in their heart? <laughs> How many people took a job because there was joy in their heart? Well, this must be it. Or because of the money? Yes! Didn't last because they didn't get counsel of the Lord? It didn't last because they didn't get confirmation? And people get in trouble. Remember, we're still in a world where the world of the world is who? Satan. Satan. And he wants to try and bring deception and bring down everything in your life and in my life. He does not want us to walk and accept the blessings of the Lord. Amen. He does not want us to walk in counsel. He still wants us to walk in the old man. How many times have we gone to school? I, mean, I can't tell you how many times. You know, It was such a bummer, this one girl that was with us for a while. I mean, we love her. And... Uh, she was doing great. I mean, this girl was, she tried to kill her mother and herself many times. And uh, the Lord sent my wife to counsel with her and the Holy Spirit delivered her and so forth. And then she maintained that she was coming and hanging out. She was like one of our daughters and she hung out for a while, uh, for months. And she was doing great. I'm telling you, this girl was prophesying and in the spirit and having a great time. And she had a scholarship to go to college. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and the Holy Spirit said, you've been called to preach, not college. But she wanted to please her parents. The first day she went, she came home crying and said, that place is wicked. We kept telling her, get out. But my parents, I don't want to... She's gone now. I mean gone. She's in such demonic, it's, it's terrible. Pornography, you name it. The devil took her right out. That's all she had to do is trust the counsel of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's all she had to do. Praise God. So we want counsel of the Lord, not the counsel of man. Would you turn to Psalm 106? Psalm 106. Verse 8. Nevertheless, he saved them for his what? Namesake. That he might make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea also and dried it up. So he led them through the depths and through the wilderness. He saved them from the hand of him who hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The waters covered their enemies. There was no, not one of them left. Then they believed his words. They sang his praise. They soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his what? His counsel. But what? Lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tested God in the desert. He gave them their request and sent leniency into their Souls, who causes to want. When they envied Moses in the camp, and Aaron, the saint of the Lord, the earth opened up and swallowed Danan, and covered faction of Abram. A fire was kindled in their company, 
the flame burned up the wicked. So what happened? They didn't wait for the counsel of the Lord, did they? And they went right into a trap. They began to lust. They lost exceedingly because they didn't wait for the counsel of the Lord. Amen? Not waiting for the counsel of the Lord moves us out of position to the counsel of somebody else. And lust increases. Psalm 81. So not waiting for the counsel of the Lord will lead to what? Destruction. Psalm 81. Oh, hallelujah. 11 through 16. Would you read it with me? But my people would not heed my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsels. Hmm. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Now, understand something. When we wait for the counsel of the Lord and we accept it, and we're listening, and we do it, first thing that happens is He subdues our enemies. It says, the haters of the Lord would pretend submission to Him, but their fate would endure forever. He would have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock. I would have satisfied you. Now we've got to understand, godly counsel will bring power over the enemy, revelation of His Word, and manifestation of His Spirit. Counsel of the Lord will bring power over your enemy, revelation of the Word, and manifestation of His Spirit. Counsel of the Lord will bring power over your enemy, revelation of the Word, and manifestation of the Spirit. Okay? That means if you obey the counsel of the Lord, not if you just heed to the counsel of the Lord. That's if you obey the counsel of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 23. <coughs> Jeremiah 23. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? In verse 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their what? Own heart. Not from the mouth of the Lord. They continue to say to those who despise me, the Lord said, you shall have peace. Hmm. That's called soulish. To everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say. So what is he saying? You're going to have peace to walk in the dictate of your own heart. That's ridiculous. These are the prophets that were prophesying this then. The Lord said they were lying. No evil shall come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard His word? Who has marked His word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, a violent whirlwind. It will fall violently on the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until He has executed and performed the thoughts of His heart. In the latter days, you will understand it perfectly. Are we in the latter days? Yes. Amen. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. 
I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Let me share something with you. False counsel puffs up and promotes evil that is in the eyes of the Lord, evil in the eyes of the Lord. There's three types of counsel. There's godly counsel, which is from the Spirit. There's soulish counsel, which is humanist or from man's heart. So there's spirit count, godly counsel from the Spirit, soulish counsel from the human spirit. And there's wicked counsel that is demonic. False counsels, puffs up, and promotes evil. And evil can be the slightest evil that's in the, according to the eyes of God. In some men's eyes, it may not be evil, but in the eyes of the Lord, it is evil. And there's three types of counsel, spirit or godly counsel, soulish counsel, and wicked counsel. In James 3.13, Let me share this with you. Spirit counsel is what changes an individual. Soulless counsel is temporary. And wicked counsel is deadly. James 3. Hallelujah. Everybody all right? In verse 13. Would you read it with me? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Woohoo. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. He's talking about counsel now. <coughs> For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So we see that this is godly counsel, isn't it? Counsel from the Lord is pure, life-changing. Psalm 73. Seventy-three, verse twenty-one. Seventy-three, twenty-one. Let's read it together. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards see, receive me to what? Glory. Glory. Praise be to God. But did you notice what he said? I was foolish and ignorant like a beast before you. Wasn't getting 
Godly counsel. Come on, we've all been there. Some of us get there over the weekend, too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Kings 5. Second Kings 5. Verse 1. Would you read it with me? Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. Well, well he needed he wanted some help. <laughs> In verse 9, Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. So he wanted to get healing. Does everybody understand it? So he found the man of God. He went to the man of God to get counsel. The man of God sent the messenger because the man of God knew what was needed. Why? By the spirit of counsel. So, he sent out his messenger, right? In verse 11. So he tells him to go dip seven times in the murky water at the Jordan. <laughs> but Naaman became real, what? Furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Let me tell you, probably 95% of the body of Christ expect this. They expect serving the Lord to come over and wave their hand over the individual and it's over with. And it's not true. And I'm not saying it can't happen. Far be it. But it's not true. Okay? God always counsels with us. And there's always a doing something. There's always a doing something. So the first thing there was always in counsel, godly counsel is there's hearing and doing. Hearing and doing. Amen? So the man went and finally did what he was supposed to do, you know. <laughs> and God healed him. Everybody got it? Let's read on. Are not the, uh, and the servants came to him and, and they said, Are not the Abana and the Pharaoh the rivers of Damascus, better than all? Oh no, this was, uh, this was a Naaman talking. He says, aren't these other rivers better? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. In other words, he wanted to get healed the way he expected to. He wanted counsel. He expected the servant of the Lord to come out and wave a wand and lightning bolts and, you know, wonderful feelings of electricity going through him. And goosebumps, you know. And all of these feelings he wanted. He said, why couldn't this happen to me? Couldn't send me to a river that was cleaner than the Jordan? He left here furious, didn't he? He wanted to drive through council. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more than when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in a Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child and he was clean. Amen? Let me share something with you. Sometimes counsel from the Lord does not make sense. 
doesn't make sense. Yeah. But if you are willing to trust, first of all, I don't believe somebody goes to get counsel from someone unless they believe he's a man or woman of God. <laughs> believe me, I counsel with a lot of people who try to tell me what their counsel needs. You know, I do, I let them talk. Go ahead. When we're ready to listen, then I'll talk. You know, I really think this, and I think I... Well, man, what are you doing here, then? <laughs> Hallelujah, you just got your own counsel. Sometimes godly counsel just doesn't make sense. Has everybody got it? And there is no drive through counsel. So remember, the Lord always gives us counsel with hearing and doing. Hearing and doing. Go to Exodus 18. Oh, hallelujah. Exodus 18. Oh, hallelujah. And verse 13. And it was, and so it was on the next day that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood before Moses from morning until evening. So when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, he said, What is this thing that you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you from the morning until evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a difficulty, they come to, see, come to me, and I judge between one and another, and I make known the statutes of God and His laws. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you do is not good. Now, wait a minute. Moses' intention was doing good, wasn't it? It sounded like he was doing a good thing. Now, you got to understand something. Moses is talking to God face to face, and the Lord sends Moses' father-in-law because Moses was a humble servant. He was willing to accept the counsel of a wise man. Not a worldly man. A wise man. Um, in verse 18, he said, Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out, for this thing is too much for you. You are not able to perform it by yourself. Listen now to my voice, and I will give you what? Counsel. And God will be what? with you. So he said to him, listen, if you accept this counsel, God's going to be with you. But if you reject the counsel, God will not be with you. He said, stand before God for the people so that you may bring the difficulties to God. And you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and the work they must do. Hearing and doing. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Now, how did, how did he express these men? Fearing God, men of truth, and hating covetousness. Whoa. Hallelujah. And let them judge the people at all times, and it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they themselves shall judge. So it will be easier for you, for they will bear the burden with you. If you do this thing, and God so command you, then you will be able to endure, and all this people will also go to their place in peace. Why? Because then enough of them would be counseled. Amen? So he had to accept this counsel from an elder. 
someone that was wise, someone that was more mature. So many times people, if they don't get counsel from the pastor or someone in office, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. And it's the Lord trying to give them counsel because someone who's been there, somebody who's experienced the same circumstance, or someone that's more mature. Has everybody got it? Amen. People don't want to listen. They only want to hear from a certain office or a certain authority. Amen? But you know, if you've been somewhere and you've seen it, wouldn't you want to tell someone? That's still counsel, isn't it? In fact, that's godly counsel, isn't it? Amen. You know, people stay in torment not knowing what to do because pride won't let them come. But when they come, pride won't let them receive. <laughs> so pride is the number one hindrance of accepting counsel of God or going to get counsel. Go to Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 10. Mm. 10 through 12. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to what? Nothing. In other words, worldly counsel or man's counsel, he brings to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of what? No effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blesses the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. So we know that he brings man's counsel to nothing. Things may start off good. I see people start off in ventures that sound wonderful, but you know what? They start off without waiting on counsel of the Lord. Businesses, whatever it may be, and then they don't last. And they get all frustrated with God. Why didn't this happen? Why didn't that happen? First of all, it's probably not God's timing. A lot of people like to run ahead of God. It's one of those tendencies the devil likes to do. Because if he can get us ahead of God, he can get us out of God. Yeah. Psalm 1. You know how many people walked away from the Lord because the Lord gave them counsel? Yeah. <laughs> or they rejected counsel? Or they didn't wait on the confirmation of counsel? And then they blamed God? It says many will fall from the faith, right? In these latter days. Because you got to understand something. The world is bombarded with greed and selfishness right now greatly. It's me, 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 me. That's the, that's the demonic that's out there right now. That's why the most important thing is to stay humble. We must always be teachable. We must always be willing to receive correction. In Psalm 1 it says, Bless is the man who walks not in the counsel of the godly, on the ungodly. So then... Curse is the man who walks in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates. They know, in other words, he's submissive to what the counsel of the Lord is. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth its fruit in its season. Whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does will what? Prosper. Prosper because it's. God is with him. Hallelujah. But the word tells us in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or lack of counsel. And he says, because you reject my counsel, I will reject you for being priests. And because you don't remember or obey what has been told to you, I'm going to reject your children. It's the same thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.
First Thessalonians chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. So, you know, we got to remember something that the, uh, the Lord in the Old Testament uh, counsel was through his servants, through prophets, through dreams and visions. Amen? And, of course, we know that the, the Ten Commandments were given. And Jesus came and fulfilled all of those, not that he removed them, not, so it's still continuing, isn't it? But today, because he has fulfilled all those things, continued counsels by his Spirit and his word to individuals and offices of the body of Christ. Amen? Because the word tells us in Ephesians 4 uh, that the offices that have been given, the fivefold ministry of the offices, have been given to edify and build up the body of Christ <coughs> so that they won't be tossed to and fro from doctrines or false doctrines or ungodly counsel. That's why it's so important of fellowship. That's why it's so important of getting in the spirit. That's why it's so important of when you don't know what to do, don't do anything and wait on God. That's why it's so important to come and get counsel. That's why it's so important to uh, touch and agree on certain areas in your life in prayer. Nothing is done without prayer. If you're not seeking God, remember we talked about Friday night about seeking the kingdom and all things will be added unto you. Well, that means you, God's going to meet every one of your needs, isn't he? But when we struggle with certain things and we're waiting on counsel of the Lord, we cannot hold ourselves back by pride and not get the counsel. And we cannot go get counsel and have pride, not us receive it. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I counsel with a lot of people. And they, you know what their heads do go in front of me? Yeah, 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 yeah. They walk out and just throw everything that the Spirit has just said to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's over with. And they go back doing the same old thing over and over. Hallelujah. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, I want to share something before I speak this. Before we say the scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Seven things of godly counsel. One, godly counsel is pure and true. Always Pray and welcome the spirit of counsel. Godly counsel is pure and true. Number two, never exalts self. Number one is pure and true, never exalts self. Number three, never in interrupts God. Number four, never promotes sin. Number five, exposes evil. Number six, imparts wisdom. Number seven, results in freedom to be passed on to someone else. Number seven, results in freedom to be passed on to someone else. Number one is pure and true. Number two, never exalts self. Number three, never interrupts God. Number four, never promotes sin. Number five, exposes evil. Number six, imparts wisdom. Number seven, the results are freedom to be passed on to someone else. Seven things of godly counsel. Hallelujah. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 16, the word says what? Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. 
in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now, it says test all things, don't try all things. You know, a lot of people think they got godly counsel in some way, and they go try something instead of testing it. That's the difference between sticking your finger in the water to test it and diving in and trying it. Come to find out, it wasn't water at all. Hello? That's the same thing with godly counsel. So when you believe you've gotten godly counsel from the Spirit, you test it. Yeah. Everything must be tested. When you get a word from the Lord, prophecy, whatever, test it. Everything should be tested. Everything is tested. Because you'll fall into troubles. Amen? Now remember, in soulish counsel, it's always trying to Comfort the soul. You know, and I share this before. Sometimes in our services at the jail, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of guys begin to weep and cry and so forth, you know. And then some of these other guys come over and start touching them and patting them. And I tell them to get off of them because they quench the spirit. But because they're caught up in the soul, they want things their way. They think they're actually helping God. And that's not true. Same thing in relationships. People go, go through great lengths to get a relationship because it's what they believe or what they feel. But God doesn't promote sin. Amen? He's not a soulish counselor. He's a spirit counselor. And that's why you and me must allow the Lord to build the house because it will last. If it's not built by the Lord, it won't. But then it's our responsibility to maintain it, isn't it? People fall into codependency because it's soulish. People can't get rid of certain things in their life because they mean so much sentimental things to their soulish realm. There's so much soulish counsel, it's ridiculous. But soulish counsel will still puff someone up. But spirit counsel will straighten someone up. Amen? So it's not about pleasing man, it's about pleasing God. And when we get counsel from the Lord, make sure you get confirmation. And if you're uncertain about that confirmation, believe me, wait for more. Test it. Don't try it. And let the Lord build your house. It's time we started getting understanding of godly counsel. Amen? Hey, now let me share something with you. Sometimes godly counsel doesn't feel good at all. In fact, majority of the time it doesn't. It doesn't always confirm what you're feeling or what you're thinking or what you believe should be done. Let me tell you, 95% of the time it doesn't. And the other 5%, you're wrong. Hello? <laughs> so let's get godly counsel and wait on confirmation and get out of the soul and get out of the flesh and stay in the spirit amen? amen so now we've got something to go by when somebody's giving counsel when you're getting counsel by the spirit or you're going to get counsel does everybody understand it you know why the spirit gave us this tonight because there's going to be a lot more garbage coming out a lot more amen Lord, thank you for your word. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name.